A bit of overall comic news. Uh, a number of little things got sprinkled out over the last uh, four or five days, so you may have missed it, and that's okay. Here we'll summarize it all up. Nothing earth-shaking, uh, nothing striking, but just a couple little bits around some cancellations, some new titles, some people on some books, and uh, and all the rest, and some spoilers when we get into it, so I'll, I'll, I'll flag that. So don't worry, you don't have to tune away yet. I'll save that to the end. But let's get to it. Hey everybody, this is Perch. This is a collection of a lot of little pieces of news. Uh, nothing earth-shaking, I think, uh, in here, but just a bunch of kind of little things that were announced uh, scattered between. It is a shame, though, because a lot of these pieces, while small, uh, <laughs> coming out during Comic-Con weekend might have been a good idea. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Anyway, um, getting right to it, we did get word, and as a lot of people suspected, that the Ed Brisson Ghostwriter has been canceled. Uh, that book is ending with issue number seven. And that's uh, that's out now, so I think that's it's it's all over. Um, unfortunately, that was shaping up to be a decent little comic, but like a lot of things in Marvel right now, the solo books just have no room to breathe. The events are coming continuously, and so if you're trying to get a solo book kind of off the ground and, and moving, even if it's a known title like like Ghost Rider, it's just not going anywhere. Now, there's a lot of titles that are selling much worse than Ghost Rider, um, but Ghost Rider apparently is in a demographic that they're not interested in or is just not uh, indicative of kind of their future plan. So that title is over. Um, there's no real hints that uh, the book is continuing. Um, unfortunately, it's it's just kind of you know the end uh, with, with issue, issue uh, seven. But uh, Aaron Kudar uh, was uh, did a good job with that book too. I mean, there's some really solid stuff, and unfortunately, this kind of ends with a lot of stuff up in the air. So who knows if they're going to come back to it or if these characters are just. Uh, they'll just kind of forget about it, and uh, I, I who knows? Anyway, some bad news there. If you're a fan of uh, of Ghost Rider, that that title uh, has uh, has come to an end. Um, on the new title coming out, there was a bunch of uh, teasers for Injustice. And so what we're getting is in DC Injustice Year Zero. This is a Tom Taylor book. It, it, he was, uh, you know, he did a great job with Injustice, and it's basically launching today. So it is a you know twice monthly digital first comic, just like the original Injustice. And uh, this is kind of promising to go back and um, you know look at uh, before Superman punched the Joker. So the the world before. Injustice. Now, the curious part to all this is the entire kind of split of the DC universe really happened with that uh, moment of Superman killing the Joker and then kind of becoming a fascist and everything. Um, and so, you know, going back into the years previous seems a little, I mean, okay, I, I you know, like, isn't that just the past? But um, it is uh, anyway. It, it's 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 interesting. I think some some kind of unique things. Uh, Taylor is really killing it in terms of his uh, playing with alternative universes, and I think he's found his niche. Uh, whether it's a deceased or injustice line, he can just keep going with it. He's got some kind of uh, you know the Dark Ages coming out with Marvel. So so this is just is it clearly his lane. So just just. Stick with it um, is really the plan. Um, we've also got a new Alex Ross series, uh, and by by Alex Ross series, I mean curated series. So uh, Alex Ross is going to curate this book, and in theory, I mean, I'm assuming provide some covers because he's providing covers for roughly 99 percent of all the other Marvel comics right now. Um, but uh, this was this was announced actually last year, so this isn't necessarily uh, new news. But it is, uh, you know, the pandemic was out. It's going to come in November, and it's a spinoff kind of anthology book that Alex Ross is um, is really kind of going to be curating the the, the writers and the the art and and really try to uh, bring something, you know, bring his style uh, to comics. It's unclear if Marvel's going to market this heavily. Uh, this news kind of slipped under the radar, and then uh, the artist who's Paulo Rivera. Um, kind of reminded us that this is coming back. So in theory, in November, we should see some promotions when we get to those solicitations. But to date, kind of it's it's slipping very much, uh, very much under the radar. Um, the last bit of news before you get into a bit of spoiler stuff, uh, if you care about it, is that uh, we do have the next giant size X Men Phantom X uh, coming out. 
And this is going to, if you if you remember the Grant Morrison world of uh, Phantom X, and I believe it was just called the world. It was this uh, place where he grew up in this um, in this kind of virtualized environment. I'm going a little bit more into him, Phantom X is one of those characters that, in theory, should have a lot more interest. Uh, there's a lot of pieces to it that. I think make for good comics and, and uh, th- that character always felt like it was on the verge of being very popular and then uh, kind of vanished a little bit. Um, it, 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 it was a little bit confusing. Um, and then I guess there's one more thing, um, <laughs> one more thing there and the, uh, the empire. So the, the very strange kind of series of events yesterday where, um, Al Ewing did some interviews reminding people that uh, there's plenty of action left to come in Empire, which is kind of a weird statement because we're on issue three of six and there's plenty of tie-in still coming. So it's weird that you're going out and saying, uh, you know, hey, don't you know, don't worry, there's plenty of action to come. I mean, I, I was were people worried about this? I, I don't know that this was a concern of anyone's. It, it's like. I, I mean, I think everybody just pretty much assumed <laughs> that there would be more action since we're in the middle of the event. Um, and in fact, the last issue, issue three, had a lot of battles going on. And, you know, uh, it, 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 clearly there's more to do. Um, but whatever. <laughs> Who knows? The other interesting aspect to this, uh, the other kind of flap that came off this was that um, some people started to note that maybe there's some contradictions between the Empire X-Men series and the Empire, I guess, Empire uh, series, that there was uh, that the two events were not tied together very well, that there was some uh, some very different uh, storytelling going on. And uh, Al Ewing kind of said, hey, you know, the story, their story, meaning the X-Men story, doesn't contradict anything that's going on in Empire. It's a heck of a lot of fun, especially for X-Readers. We do refer to it in the main book, but more as a pointer in that direction if people want to check out how Marvel's merry mutants are weathering the crisis. Um, it, it's interesting. Uh, this is interesting for one standpoint. The X-Men has attempted to give us a tighter continuity in that line. And and by and large, they pulled it off. There aren't a lot of, like, there's a couple kind of huh, moments between the comics, but generally they do feel more fit together. Now, the rest of the Marvel Universe often feels like it's in its own universe, so much that a lot of people were speculating that what was going on in the X-Men was happening in a different reality or a different timeline completely. And then a couple of comics came out that kind of debunked that. But the continuity does not seem all connected at all. And, and so I think this is going to be a growing problem. So this is kind of like a, a, a reminder to check back in in about four months as we have Ten of Swords, we have the, the, uh, the King in Black. We have some of the Spider-Man storylines going on. I, I think that Marvel has managed to kind of ignore continuity gaps, uh, things not piecing together. And then I think what happened is the pandemic hit. You had this this blank slate of comics where no comics were coming out. And as they came back, people were trying to kind of get their minds wrapped back around what was going on. They're seeing Empire. They're seeing Iron Man 2020. You know, they're seeing uh, virtual Tony with the imaginary armor. And you've got you know, the plant people invading and you got, so you've got a lot of things and and people are not, their their heads aren't wrapping around it. And, you know, in many ways, the correct answer is just don't think about it (laughs) because you could drive yourself crazy thinking about comic book continuity. But at the same time, you you got to at least kind of navigate in such a way that that people still feel more or less comfortable. They still got some level of hook that they can connect into. And that seems to be missing at this point. So, there is there is something there there's a gap here, um, and it's it's just interesting to see how these titles are are kind of navigating it. Um, over to now, I'm going to go into some spoilers, uh, particularly for uh, Death Metal. So if you're if you're into that series and you really kind of want to let that all roll out, then um, you know tune away now. Uh, but but going to basically talk a little bit about what we've learned um, in a, in a few different things. So. Uh, basically, uh, what we've learned, you so see, you hopefully are gone by now if, if you care about these things. So Robin King is this new character that's going to show up and, and be uh, part of the DC uh, death metal. And, and they're, they're kind of billing him up as being a breakout character. Um, and there's some dialogue that Scott Snyder has been really promoting as, you know, being really wicked and, and nuts. Um, and as we come to discover, 
um, this this Robin King character is, you know, who is he? It's is it Jason Todd? Is it uh, Dick Grayson? No, it's actually Bruce Wayne himself. And this is a Bruce Wayne who uh, was, you know, is an evil little kid. Uh, basically, didn't uh, wasn't raised the right way. Whatever it happens to be, um, you know, kills the mugger that tries to get his parents and kills his parents. And it's basically a little little crazy sociopath. So it is actually a young Bruce Wayne, um, which is really sticking to <laughs> the, um, I guess this continue. Every villain is Bruce Wayne <laughs> in this. Uh, I keep waiting for Perpetua to be revealed as a, as a Bruce Wayne. It's just, they're all Bruce Wayne. Um, anyway, there's there continues to be uh, a lot of, of little pieces. Um, and it, 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 it's, it's, it's interesting to see death metal tile these things together. Kind of the other moment in the comic out today is, is really kind of going into how, uh, you know, the, the Batman who laughs is Dr. Manhattan now and, and has those powers. And so uh, it is, it, it is tight. You know, Scott Snyder promised everything was going to connect. And in some ways that's, that's, uh, it's interesting. It's a little clunky in some areas, but it's it, lots going on here. Um, <laughs> I don't know. There's still a promise we're going to connect into, uh, heroes in crisis, which I'm like, all right, we'll see how, we'll see how that goes. Um, meanwhile, if you're not into any of this, uh, the Joker war is, uh, is continuing uh, pretty, pretty aggressive, um, uh, you know, with, with a lot of new pieces, um, really kind of reinventing a lot of the mythos of what Bruce Wayne, his status quo, bringing some new characters into the mix. Hopefully James Tinian is not going to kill off a lot of these characters because he's, he's brought in a lot of kind of side characters who with time could become pretty, pretty incredible. Uh, the, the, the clown hunter as a new character, some of Joker's new, uh, people it's, um, it's there. There's a lot of new toys being uh, brought into the toy box. So hopefully this is something that we really maximize the value on. Anyway, that's some news for around comics, some things that have occurred again, nothing major, but just little bits. Or do any of these issues, do any of these uh, things impact you? Were you a big fan of Ghost Rider? You're sad to see it canceled. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Like subscribe, click the bell for notifications. If you're so inclined, follow me on social media. Most importantly, thanks for listening. <laughs>